everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, I feel like God doesn't put you through all those things just for just for the heck of it. Like at the end of the, it's always gonna be light at the end of the tunnel. And I feel like when I entered the transfer portal and I was able to come here, I feel like this was the light. And since since now, like it's been it's been really good for me here. Um, and I wouldn't like change my decisions for nothing. I feel like. Um, you know, I came here for a reason. Like, I went through what I went through for a reason. Um, and it's all up to me how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna go about it and how well I'm gonna do here. El, welcome to Fayetteville, man. I appreciate you. How's it going so far? It's been going well. It's been going well. Now, you're a little bit different than some transfers because you were at a big time program before, before coming here. And you had a lot of success at Louisville. So so give me a little idea of this transition for you and, and why and how. Um, I feel like it was a, a different transition for me because I was in a situation where <clears throat> I had a lot of individual success at Louisville. So coming somewhere where I had a lot of really good players around me, like that's something I had to adjust to. Um, being a vocal leader, something I had to pick up on really quickly, especially since I was the point guard of the team. Um, and then just most importantly, I would say like it's been it was a good decision for me to come here because that's what I wanted. Like to play at that next level, I gotta be able to run a team. I gotta be able to be vocal. I gotta be able to, you know, be around really good players and have a role. So I feel like that's the one of the main reasons why I came here. Pass deflected, tipped by Shefflin, but Ellis comes up for the turnover. Ellis, you see the quickness bursting into the front court and all the way. You averaged almost 18 a game, four and a half assists. You started 32 games, you were all ACC you know, honorable mention, but but you didn't start at Louisville. I mean, you, you've kind of taken a, a road to get to, to where you are. You had a great year last year. Let's back up a little bit. You started off your college career in, in junior college. I'm always interested, you know, in, in how, to, how you get to junior college. And if anybody's watched Last Chance U, they get a picture of a snapshot of what what JUCO can look like. Mm. And it ain't Louisville and it ain't Arkansas, yeah. you know, from a facility standpoint. But walk me through a little bit of like how you grew up and and you know what your childhood was like. Let's start there and I wanna kinda of work our way to how you got to JUCO. But what was what was being a kid like? Tell me about your family or how you grew up. Mm, being a kid, well well, um, my grandfather he put the ball in my hand. So it started from there, three years old, had the little the goal you get from Walmart, you put it in the house and you just I bet I can see him, I don't even know him, I can see him smiling. Like <laughs> no, nah, for sure. My mom always says that. But um that's where it started. And then um, growing up, my dad actually um, coached at a school called Kestrel Heights. That's where I went through from sixth to 11th grade. Um, so I played under him in middle school. Then I played a year or so high school there. And then I started to play like with like prep teams where I could travel, you know, playing at different competitions and stuff like that. So fast forward to my junior year of high school, I actually reclassified. I went to Mount Zion because I was trying to, you know, get my grades right and get eligible because I mean, you know, Guys that go during college, you know, school is not really a big thing for some of us. So that was really my main my main priority. So, but when I went to Mount Zion, I was actually going to transfer. And once they heard I was going to transfer, they actually took away all my credits. So basically, they failed me for the whole year. So after that, that's when I knew I had to go during college. So I just went to uh, Winston Salem at Quality Ed with uh, Coach Pitts. He had a lot of guys that go D1, a lot of big time players there. So I went there for a year um, just to be away from home, get ready for college. Um, and that's when I ended up deciding to go to Tallahassee. Um, my junior college coach, Coach Timber, he actually drove down to Durham to meet with me and my mom. A lot of junior college coaches, like, they don't do that. So for him to mm -hmm. do that, like, I felt very comfortable. He wasn't even the head coach at the time. He was still the interim trying to get the job, but I trusted him and I believed in him. And I went there, you know, had a really good two years, you know, back-to-back, uh, -back, player of the year, freshman of the year, um, all-conference, two panel championships. So. I, I did a lot of winning there, and I think I only lost nine games in the two years I was there. So I had a really good experience. Like you said, like that last chance you thing, like every year in college isn't like that, but it's some like that really is. Um, I was just very fortunate to be in Tallahassee at a really good year in college around some really good people. So, I mean, of course, we didn't have like the resources you'll have at like Louisville or here, but we made it work, so. How far is, is uh, Tallahassee Junior College from Durham, North Carolina, where you grew up? Uh, 
eight hours. Okay, so yeah. so you're away from home, mm -hmm. you know, long way. But let's go back a little bit. So you have brothers, sisters, like yeah, I got mom, dad, like three what? brothers. Um, I live with my mom. Okay. My, uh, dad and mom separated when I was seven, so okay. still my mom, but I mean, my dad still had a pretty good relationship, stuff like that, so good. that's how I went. Yeah, and then, and did you play other sports? Were you all basketball? Yeah, it was really just all basketball. I played like a few things every now and then, like when I was just bored, so I played a little soccer every now and then, baseball. We actually, we were forced to actually run cross country, so I actually won <laughs> state championship in cross country, so. Yeah. How'd you like that? How'd you like cross country? It's actually not that bad. Yeah. Once you like get that pace, like you actually enjoy being outside running, you know, with your friends. It was cool. So you, were you always like really good handling the ball? Were you always kind of smaller? Yeah, I was always kind of smaller. So um, always was good handling the ball, trying to make plays, score. I was really just known for my scoring at first, but like once I got older, like I had to, you know, change my game, think different. We're 6'3 now, you know, I guess in some, uh, circles, people might say it's small, but that's that's not um, for a five six guy. That's like your center, <laughs> your five. Right, you play right. five. Uh, so when when you're when you're playing growing up, when did it become a realization? Like, man, I'm pretty good. Mm, I would say around sixth and seventh grade. I I thought okay. I was pretty good. It was uh, I had a few games where I actually scored forty when I was in sixth and seventh grade. So I feel like that was a time where I felt like I was pretty good. But, you know, seeing like, you know, on social media, social media was still big back then. So, you know, just seeing guys that was always on social media, you know, at that time, you still had that sense of like, maybe I'm not that good because I'm not getting the recognition as mm -hmm. other people were. But, you know, everybody's path is different. And I feel like now, since I got to where I am, like it just feels much better that I didn't have all that recognition coming out of high school. I didn't have all the offers and everything like that. Like. It just feels a lot better because I know, like, I really put the work in, and like, I'm a firm like believer that the work you put in always shows. So, it's cool that we have social media um, for an era now because we can go back maybe and find. I'm guessing, can we go find a 40 point game from you? Is that on YouTube anywhere? Uh, probably, probably not because it was. Man, don't act school. like you don't know it's in your phone. <laughs> just send it. Can you just send it to me? Can you no. send me all the highlights. I'm kidding. <laughs> but it is cool, like back, you know, like before your time, mm -hmm. you don't have any, you know, a lot of people don't have that stuff or they right. had to have like a old school, you mm -hmm. know, video recorder. Yeah, for sure. But so, so you were, you were scoring at a high rate at a young age. Did you play a bunch of summer ball? Yeah, a bunch of summer ball. I played so, with Dumb Hurricanes, yeah. um, Team Felton, Team John Wall. So, so you were, you were a, a Recruit, you're a prospect. Like mm -hmm. you're on people's radar. Yeah, you're getting recruited by major schools, mm -hmm. and so the grade thing that you mentioned earlier that becomes an issue. Yeah, that became like the main issue of why a lot of schools didn't pull the trigger. Like I had a, I had a few like D ones like at the beginning before like they got out that I was gonna probably be ineligible. So I had, I think I got my first offer um, my ninth grade summer. Mm -hmm. I think it was Santa Clara. I know I had Santa Clara, I had NC Central, I had Southern, um, and Kennesaw State. I know I had those four for sure, but once the grade thing got out, like I had a bunch of like high majors that I would talk to and stuff like that, but it just they just wouldn't like mess with me. So how difficult was that for you? And and just tell me about that, what you, yeah. when you found out, man, that I'm in this bad spot. What, like you told me you had a transcript issue, mm -hmm. but was there some of, what happened to you that you just weren't taking it serious enough and you had to learn something from that? Yeah, for sure. Like, I feel like I was in a position I was like because of me. Like, mm. um, really, I just didn't lock in on the schoolwork. And I had people tell me like I needed to like really lock in and focus on it. But, you know, being a basketball player, you feel like, no, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm going to figure it out. I'll be fine. So and that was just a big yeah. thing. Like, like people I hung around, like we had like that same issue. Like, oh, we'll be fine. Like, we play basketball. They're going to work something out for us. But I was really in that situation, like, because of me. Like, I didn't go to school as much, you know. Um, when it came, like, to, you know, turning in assignments, like, I was late. But at that point in time, we're like, I feel like it was good for me to go through that because, like, I learned a lesson, you know. Um, anything can be taken away from you at any given moment. So just to know, like, I was around a lot of players that ended up going Division One, you know, they're fr fresh, fresh out of high school and I had to, you know, take a different route. Like, it was different. How, how'd you get through that? Um, I had a I had a really like good circle of people around me. I would say that like my mom, she kept me mm. 
she kept me up. Like I got really close friends, uh, you know. And you're probably upset. Yeah, for sure. I was upset for sure because she the one who told me. Like she got the report card and was like, "It's not happening." I was like, "I mean, it's my fault. Like I just gotta make it work." So, but I actually had like a lot of guys that I actually played with like growing up that actually went junior college and. You know, just seeing them go there, you know, they ended up being successful and they ended up being in like better situations than they were gonna be in coming out of high school. So I feel like, you know, everything happens for a reason. I feel like there's a lot of, you know, talented athletes out there in that high school range right now that could hear this, you know, and, and there's a message there, right? Like, what would you tell them if you were talking to really talented players, but they don't take school seriously? I would say like it doesn't matter like how good you are like you got to like lock in you got to take care of school like because that's what comes first like basketball is going to stop sooner or later so you got to have something to fall back on so now like I got my degree like when basketball is finished like I'll be able to go do whatever I want to do so like I would just tell them like at the end of the day like you got to take care of your school or you got to like make sure you lock in every day because honestly you never know you can get hurt and you can you can get hurt one game and you never pick up a basketball again like and like once you get hurt, like in sports, like it's hard to, you know, come back from that. So I would say like really lock in on your mm -hmm. schoolwork, really, you know, like take things serious because you never know. Yeah, it's a great point about there's a whole life outside of basketball and you're going to need that education. Mm -hmm. But also the part about doing stuff you don't feel like doing. That's, see, that's, that's the thing, like doing stuff you don't feel like doing. And, and there's some days like you're not going to feel like going to the gym, like, but you got to get up, you got to do it because at the end of the day, like, that's your job. Like, school and basketball, like, you got to, you got to be able to, you know, take time and do both. Like, figure out, like, how to get through it on the days you don't want to do something and you don't feel like it. Well, props to you, man, for, like, fighting through it. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate you. So, yeah, so you get all, you, you get, you rally it up and you get that done and you go to JUCO. What's your mindset when you get to JUCO? What are you thinking? Uh, this is my last chance. Like, I got to make it work. Like, um... At first it was hard because, you know, freshman coming in, I had a lot of division one transfers, you know, so a lot of older guys, 22, 23, like, and I'm trying to fight for a spot. Like, you know, the coach telling me like, I'm gonna play a whole lot. Like, at the time, like, first three, four, five games, like, I'm not playing as much. I'm like, oh, like, this dude then was honest with me, this, that, and third, but it wasn't like that at all. Like, he just wanted to, you know, show me that, like, it comes more to it. Like, you gotta really fight for something that you want. You gotta really work for it, so. When the time came and like he gave me that chance, like I actually we went to a tournament. Went to a tournament. Actually, the first game I had like 34, eight assists, like five rebounds. Like next game I had like 28, five assists, six rebounds. Like so, at that time, like that's when he just said, like, "It's your team. Like we're gonna go as far far as you go." And that was it. And still loose ball, and now it's picked up by Tallahassee. Ellis takes it in for the basket. That must have made you feel like. What? Yeah, it, it felt it felt really good because like like I said, like it was nice I was in the gym late, you know. So like putting that work in and it finally coming shows like it was good. And then as a freshman in junior college, like when you're ineligible, like you you come in and you have bad grades, like you're not supposed to like get scholarships that first year. Man, I had almost every school calling like my first year. So it was crazy. Hill gives it to Ellis. Ellis gets it across half court, goes hard, shots up and good. So yeah, you played one year there, right? Two years. Two, two years. Um, and tell me about like overall, just what your highlights were, just in your, like in terms of your memories. What what was the best part? Man, I got a, I got a lot of really good memories. Um, I would say just being the best team in the conference. You know, back to back two years. Um, had a lot of big games. Um, I think I was one of the first people. I was one of the first, second, third guys there to like win freshman of the year, player of the year, back-to-back -back years, back-to-back -back player of the years, like, so like I made some history there. So I feel like that was, that was big for me. It was big. Here's Ellis, Ellis to the basket. That's a tough shot. He is something else. So you go to Louisville, you get recruited, you choose Louisville. Tell me about your first year there. Uh, for, Louisville, Louisville was rough, Louisville was rough. Uh, first year coming in, we had a lot of guys. We had 15 guys. All of us like came from spots where like we produced, we played at a high level. Um, and you know, it didn't go as as well as I thought it would. Like we ended up being like 
right under 500. I mean, we were supposed to be protected. Like, it was a point in time where actually the best team in the ACC were A and O. You know, we were doing well. Ended up having some coaching, coaching is issues, you know, player issues and things like that, and just went downhill. Ended up being under 500. So, but after that, like, it was my, for my senior year, it was a coaching change. Kenny Payne came in, um, told me, he told me, like, he felt like I would, I would have a really big year for my senior year. He didn't know how good we were going to be. We didn't think it was going to be that bad, but we knew, like, it was going to be some issues. For, it was going to be a rebuild year, so I wanted to be a part of that, and he gave me an opportunity, and I'm grateful for that. Like, I had really good success individually, and that's why I'm here. So you had six man of the year. Mm-hmm. Your junior year, runner up. You were runner up, mm -hmm. six man of the year. The um, yeah, that's right. So I guess where I was going with that is that means you weren't starting. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I didn't so, start to like the last five six games. So what was that junior year like? Was that difficult? Yeah, it was, was difficult. Kinda, yeah, because yeah. I coming in like I was told like I was gonna be playing big minutes and stuff like that, but we ended up getting a lot of older guys. Like we had three fifth year guards that, um, that I was playing with. So we was all like, it was a point in time where we were all like playing different minutes, like not playing the minutes that we thought we were. So it was different. It was actually difficult for everybody coming in. Like we all thought it was gonna be this, ended up being something else. Like, so I would say it was difficult for everybody. So I'm just thinking of this journey you've been on, like, you know, the grades thing, Juco, and Juco goes well, but then you get to the next level and it's not going great and you just keep having to fight. Like, what, what has all that taught you? And then you end up having a great senior season. You've got one year left now. But but what did it, what has all that taught you? Um, I have would you say, thought about that? No, I have. I have a lot. Um, I would say, like, everything, like, everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, I feel like God doesn't put you through all those things just for just for the heck of it. Like, at the end of the, it's always going to be light at the end of the tunnel. And I feel like when I entered the transfer portal and I was able to come here, I feel like this was the light. And, since since now like it's been it's been really good for me here um and i wouldn't like change my decisions for nothing i feel like um you know i came here for a reason like i went through what i went through for a reason um and it's all up to me how i'm gonna how i'm gonna go about it and how well i'm gonna do here Ellis. Wow. <laughs> what a shot at the end of the half Ellis. tell me about the decision to come to arkansas and how that came about so when um I played against them at the Maui Invitational. Rough game, rough game. Um, but I, don't, I haven't. I still haven't watched that game. But uh, well, what do you remember about <laughs> why it was rough? Uh, just the the intensity they played with. You know um, how well they scouted for us. They knew I was actually coming into that tournament. I was averaging 25 coming into the Maui Invitational, um, and then. I just remember I was like, cause I remember I remember Devo like from that dunk he had against Auburn, and I was like, say he was one of the best defenders in the, in the SEC. So I was like, I know he's gonna be guarding me. So he was wearing me down. Then Anthony Black was guarding me. Then like just switching different guys, like they had different schemes, you know. So we were actually in the game to the second half. Second half it got bad, and that's when I was like, dang, like that's what like that's what a high level team is like. And that's something I wanted to be a part of, like for my. So like when I was granted that last year eligibility, I was like, man, like I knew I had a feeling they was gonna call, but I didn't know for sure. But once I got that call, and I was like, I knew from like the get go, like I wanted to go there. Like Coach Musselman has great success, like since he's been here. You know, he had guys like that wasn't wasn't on draft boards, that wasn't like supposed to go to the league, end up going to the league, like so. I feel like it was really important. It was a really big decision for me to come here. Like he said, it was gonna be hard. It was gonna be difficult. It was gonna be a grind, and it was. It's been a difficult grind all my life, so it wasn't really nothing for me to come here. What's it been like to be in this program after being in all the high school, JUCO, uh, an ACC program? You know, you've been around. You played in big gyms and all that, big yeah. crowds. But what's so? What was it like to walk into a Eric Musselman organization? It's different, it's totally different. Like the culture here is different. Um, I think that's something I had to adjust too quick. Like being in the gym, I, I would say like, this is the most like I've ever been in the gym. Like getting around 3,000, 3,500 3, makes a week. So- Makes? Makes, not shots, makes. 
So you times that by four, like 1,300, 13,000, 14,000 makes like a month. So like- And the culture just makes you want to be- Makes you, it makes you like you, you get, I get here at 8.45 every day, like the whole staff is already like in the weight room working out, like everybody. Must runs, miles on top of miles, like all day. Like he's here at six every day, probably here at five. Like I remember my first day, like that Monday trying to get to the gym, like I thought I was gonna be the first one here to no, know, like he's already in the gym. Like I'm walking, walking in the facility. What's up, L? Like good morning. Like, I'm like, yo, like, I ain't never seen a coach there that early, like, every day working. And it's not just he does it once, twice a week, no, like, it's every day. So, like, once I seen that, I was like, if my coach is out here, like, working, the staff is out there working like that, like, there's no way, like, I'm gonna let them outwork me, like. But, like, it's different. It's just, like, a different culture here. Like, the way we practice, the way we go about things each and every day, like, it's totally different. The way, the way, like, I haven't been around a coach like that so in tune, like, with his players, you know, getting, trying to get every ounce of, like, their potential up out of them. So, like, I would say, like, it's a really different environment. And, like, they say, like, if you can, if you can play for Eric Musman, like, you can you can play for anybody. So. <laughs> <laughs> is it that, is it, is it, like, unexpectedly or hard, you know? And when you say that, um, you know, like, what I see from guys like you is you thrive mm -hmm. in the environment, not like, like, oh, man, I can't stand this. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, for sure. Like, I would say with guys like me, like, I feel like you can really thrive here. Like, like I would say coming in as a freshman, like, it's, it's tough, like, because it's just different. You coming out of high school, like, so if you come out of high school, you playing for Eric Musselman, like, you're a tough kid. Like, and we got two freshmen that are going to be really good and they're really tough. So, um, like, coming in as a transfer, I would say, is, I mean, you've been around, so, like, you know, like, you know the expectations. Like, you know what you got to do every day. So, I feel like it's a little easier for us. Tell me about your, this team. What, as a leader, as a guy that runs the show at the point position, and you have a feel like, what's that? What are you seeing? We got a really, we got a lot of guys that are like really good, and I haven't been around a group of guys like this before. Like, cause I'm not the only one that's in the gym. Like, one through sixteen, like even our walk ones are in the gym. Like, it's everybody. Like, just like everybody comes in, you know, ready to work each and every day. Like, everybody has like their goals, their expectations. Everybody wants to win. Um, and I feel like that's that's like big when everybody, you know, like you you have a lot of talented guys, but you know, at the end of the day, like everybody wants to sacrifice to win. And I feel like that's what we got. How are you and Devo doing now? Me and Devo oh, are actually doing, team. like, we're actually doing really well. Uh, we were on the same team with the red and white scrimmage and after um, the scrimmage, like we played really well together and, but we haven't been playing together like during practice and stuff like that. And Mus was like super surprised. He came in the next day and was like, man, I didn't know like, Y'all two would play so well together. And honestly, like, I love playing with them. Like, it's good to have somebody like that on your team and not playing against them. Like, so it's been really good to play with them. Oh, you've had a, a journey, man. You should be proud of yourself for everything you overcome, the accomplishments, the way you continue to fight. But when your time here as a Razorback is over, which we hadn't even played a game yet, but when it's over, how do you hope Razorback fans remember your time here? Mm, someone that competes in every, every night. Um, that really showed emotion on the court, have fun, and was probably they won at a high level. Like that's one of the main reasons why I came here. Like, is to win. Um, I know everything else is gonna take it, take care of itself on the court. I don't know I'm gonna play well. Like I put too much work in not to. So I just feel like just being remembered as a winner. I mean that's one of the most important things for me.